I'm here with Jamal. We're finally, there's a whole bunch of geeks that showed up. These people are for reInvent. There's, what did you say, 40,000? Even more than 40,000. Every, oh, this year is more than 40,000. Okay, there's a lot of people here. Um, and yeah, we're, uh, Jamal found, my, found out my, about my video thing. So he asked a good question, if my video is going to be technical related? Yes. Your question about ECS, or what did you? Oh, why did he? Why did you choose ECS in the first place? Because I needed to run Docker containers, and there's a bunch of ways to do it, uh, like Core OS and running your own instances, I guess, ma your own managed instances. But I was attracted to like the Amazon solution, I guess, and um, it turns out the Amazon solution has some major issues. Minor issues. Major issues. Or minor. I wouldn't say they're major or minor, but they have some issues and they're, and they're not clearing them away as, as fast as I like. Like for example, I monitor all the GitHub repositories. Um, I watch them. I watch you guys. Once, if you do everything right, like do everything right, you get like zero downtime and um, yeah, that, that, that's the major thing. Zero downtime, because we, we can't drop a request. Yes, so when I started, uh, the ECS was already in place and there was no auto scaling ECS provided. Yeah. It only got introduced in Singapore region two months ago. So I was actually going to get rid of the whole setup because the requests were being dropped because we were using. Okay, that's us. Uh, uh, my experience for the ECS was really bad at the start. So because we were using uh, Nginx proxy to, you know, register new containers and deregister the old containers uh, as we were deploying stuff. It's so like a hack. That doesn't really fit in with the whole ECS yeah. thing at so all. How did you do that? Jeez. It was like a plain, because we were using in production and it was a very small service, nobody really didn't care. But as we were gaining a lot more insight into the logs, we saw a lot of requests were being dropped just while we were switching from a new uh, revision of a of the task with the old division. So the switching between was like well, you're blunt. Not, you're not using the load balancer? We were using the load balancer, but to only for inbound. So inbound and AT coming uh, coming through, tra traffic coming through, the load balancer going to the Nginx proxy. And Nginx was keeping track of the all the exposed uh, ports and all the services. So Nginx is, was being used to register, deregister uh, containers and ports but why do it that way? Because you're supposed to use the ECS way. Um. Because it didn't make any sense. Because we had three services, and for three services, we had to introduce three different instances. Yeah, I agree. Yes. They, they, yeah. The the Amazon way seems that they they want you to map a service to an instance, which I mean, the, let's actually start from the beginning. Yeah. It is actually. Uh, containers, as you may or not, may or might not know, is uh, like a Linux uh, technology, and one of the reasons why it's uh, an excellent technology, it does away from virtualization. So, so the, the the thing that makes me chuckle is that EC2 is virtualization. It's like it's like Zen or whatever, their own technology to virtualize on top of a hardware, a physical bare bare metal, as it's it's called. So yeah, running a container inside a virtualized EC2 instance is kind of like, frankly, stupid. So um, this is why I think Lambda is going to be quite successful because the Lambda obviously take advantage of container technology without EC2. I'm well, or maybe a more streamlined. Oh. Yep, that's that's great. Thanks. Cheers, cheers. Yeah. So, um, so you. Your problem was that it was dropping requests, requests going outbound uh, from the Nginx proxy. In, requests coming in were being dropped. We were having a lot of 504s. Uh, we couldn't see what the capacity problems are uh, of the containers because there was no not connection draining. There was no like connection tracking or anything. Isn't this like an Nginx proxy? I mean, I don't even know what Nginx proxy does, but it sounds like it's... It was like, it was like a custom-built Nginx proxy. For, especially for ECS containers, just to overcome this problem of running 
more than one service or uh, two or three services or two or three tasks in one instance. So it's designed for Amazon ECS? It was designed for ECS. Kind of and is it supported by Nginx? No, no it was not. It's like a man. project which we found on, N on GitHub. Oh, so man. yeah, it was kind of a tricky and twisted solution. But it was already implemented, so I, I can wash my hands of it. So what, what, what you've just suspended that project? So suspended was, uh, we suspended the Nginx thing. So as soon as Amazon introduced in Singapore, application load balancing and auto scaling of the containers, yeah. we switched back or we switched to the proper, proper way. So we create the whole image in Jenkins, running all the tests, verifying everything is fine on our images. Yeah. And then we use that image and properly define containers and then containers, those ports are actually tracked or attached to the target groups of the application load balancer. Okay. So the target group uh, is dynamic. So whatever the host port is assigned to the container, the target group keeps track of that of that port number and then dynamically manages those ports. So we don't. So no agent or no nginx proxy has to take okay, care of so that. You're doing it the proper ECS. The way, proper ECS. Using the load balancer. Load balancer, auto scaling group, target groups. So for three services, three different load balancers. Yeah. And to be honest, I'm not using auto scaling because um, the scaling of the particular service that I manage is not really required. And if it was required, it, I, I can just do it manually. So you know, like I use ECS CLI and then I just go ECS CLI. Uh, oh. Scale equals five, and then, <laughs> but then you have to do the service uh, scale five. Two. Yes, yes. There's two phases to it. You have to provision the instances, and then you provision the services on the instances. <laughs> no, I use the service uh, metrics for auto scaling, which is memory utilization. So I knew one of my services is CPU uh, intensive, and two of my services are memory intensive. So I knew where, when and where I had to scale when I'm reaching 80% or 90%. Oh, so yeah, I have a scaling on the, on, the, on, the, on the ramp. Actually, while I was studying for this exam examination, I was doing some test questions, and evidently EC2 CloudWatch doesn't give you RAM utilization. You have to make a custom metric. But I guess with the ECS, you get the RAM utilization. I think I've seen it in the yes, console. You get, you get two levels of RAM utilization. One is uh, the cluster instance RAM utilization. And the, and the second one is service-based RAM utilization, which is really good. But, um, but for, for uh, in my experience, I, I usually just track free memory because, um, because you know, tracking RAM is a bit of a weird one because a lot of applications just take the fucking thing. Yes. And you can't tell if they're actually using it, really. Well, actually, the RAM thing is, is a whole different debate because in ECS... Uh, I was trying to use Docker Compose because our service was not just one container, but at least like three, con three yeah, containers. Yes, yeah. uh, no, one, serv one service had three containers. So three yeah. services are three different. Actually, you, you, can, run, you can run this on. Oh, that's me, that's me. Uh, do you have like a, like a, a glass? I could just see this on top? <laughs> Whoa. You have to finish it now. <laughs> it's a bun. <laughs> what the hell? This is heavy. Okay, not quite what I had in mind, but uh, this is like... What is it anyway? Like mushroom and then what? I don't even know what that is. You got it. Take 27. <laughs> um, oh man, I should just eat. But what was your last thing? Uh, oh, yeah. So basically, I was talking about uh, the memory uh, allocation, which is which which ECS is not at all flexible with. So ECS is not flexible with memory allocation. ECS is not flexible with the uh, CPU. Uh, allocation because normal containers are like very flexible they just take up 
whatever is required or whatever is available to them and ecs containers they they just recently aws recently did the uh, soft memory limit yes yes they only recently did it otherwise you have to yes. define you have to define a physical limit where obviously if your service is memory intensive it will go above and the worst thing what ecs was doing was killing off the container yeah. that's the worst thing which well, ecs can of course like yeah the whole like the image thing not being properly managed yes. so that's only recently been fixed yes that as well so still the cpu allocation is still not flexible enough and if you don't specify the cpu uh, numbers or the you know the 512 or 10 whatever units of cpu you want to assign to the uh, container it oh, yeah. by the yes that's so yes is it the one that's like 1000 yes 1014 if there's one core then there is 1024 units you need you can divide uh, per service or per container sorry per per container so if you don't define that yeah. they assume it's 10 by default it's 10 and 10 does make a lot of difference because i was running a service under heavy load so when i realized that where is the cpu going to like i'm using my service is dying because of less cpu so they were being killed it was no it was not being killed uh, the killing thing only happens with memory it doesn't happen with cpu so everything is 10 surely it was like evenly distributed no no it wasn't like uh, i i i suppose it wasn't because my test suggested when i assigned 512 units or like specific units to the uh, containers they gave me more performance based on cpu they gave me more yeah so this is a new you telling me stuff i don't i don't even know so yeah this is the question which i want to ask to the aws ecs guys this week the cpu stuff Yes, I was suspicious of that metric and like I mean it's bad enough allocating the RAM uh thing but like then is CPU uh you guys um so just to summarize what you're saying Jamal you're saying that if you didn't define that properly you were getting bad performance yes. that's the b- Yes so <clears throat> just to test that out I have normal containers running on a C4. Dot x large instance which has four cores and 16 gb ram i can run uh, 1.8 gigs size of image of a docker container which is i know it's really bad that's another debate so i can run 16 containers on normal docker instance but for ecs i can only run like four or five with that performance how you measuring performance i measuring performance by the response time I guess and the, 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 this is running docker on EC, on, on EC2. On EC2, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean parallel sessions if you run parallel sessions they they just die. ECS cannot take ECS containers cannot take a lot of load. You have to expand really much. You have to be very like generous with all the resources. And I I I I'm for sure in my specific environment when i was testing one like one equals to one normal docker containers or a normal ec2 instance was supporting a lot more load as compared to ecs but the main thing which i really love about ecs is which and the reason why i want to move forward with ecs is the scheduling is amazing the scheduling is amazing the the draining of connections the replacing of the, the containers the zero for the zero downtime exactly so yeah like i think that's how we began our conversation you asked me what i like about it only thing i could say was the zero downtime stuff really <laughs> the um, yeah that's it that's the only thing i like about it <laughs> <laughs> so the scheduling is good i don't want to introduce mesos or kubernetes that's for like two three services yeah, so like, that's the trouble is is that like i There's some I mean on first glances when it comes to containerization there's a, there's a lot of players in the market like Kubernetes core OS Docker um, I'm sure there's no other people I probably missed out on 
But I did investigate Kubernetes. I did investigate Docker, Cloud, and... Huh? Um, I think they might have changed their name. I'm not too sure. Um, this is a few months back. And I did, I did try something else. Oh, well, CoreOS, yeah. Because I run CoreOS on my personal stuff, actually. But CoreOS... Oh. So, yeah. Uh, the problem I have with the other shit stuff is that they're way more complicated. I thought ECS was complicated. It's like image task or image service. It takes a while to get to figure it out. Um, but then the other other stuff is even more bloated, actually, and more complicated. Um, yes, indeed. Have you seen indeed. That you've tried other stuff? Uh, no, I actually just saw some YouTube videos, and I was like, that was enough to put me off the whole Kubernetes thing because first of all we they need a team we need a team actually to just manage uh, Kubernetes yeah it's like it's uh, amazingly complex uh, anyways uh, talking about the challenges of ECS the other challenge uh, was doc they claim doc compose works with ECS if it would have completely then it would have been really awesome for me yeah but especially yeah, well, well, at least some of the features or most of the features you can use easily in ECS. But ECS does not support Docker Compose to s set up memory uh, reservation. So you cannot set up soft memory reservation if you're using the Docker Compose file because ECS and Docker Compose file will not understand that metric. So Docker Compose file will fail saying memory reservation it don't, doesn't understand uh, what is this about. And AWS, even if you define it, AWS will not. I use memory, the memory. Uh, it only understands the hard limit, not the soft memory reservation. Yeah, that's the trouble. There's so many caveats, isn't there? <laughs> it's, it is. It's good uh, meeting you, Jamal, because, uh, yeah, I think from this point on, we can maybe communicate online and uh, make it. But, yeah, um, there's so many caveats. So, are you actually still running ECS? Yes. So, so, uh, yes, I'm still running ECS in production because we came up with a proper pipeline, uh, uh, proper CI CD pipeline for the ECS. Oh, use the it works really well. No, uh, Jenkins, Jenkins program. So, it works really well, really smoothly, deploying new Im images and, and going back. It, it all comes really oh. often. Oh, on that topic, I, at, at, at Spool, I've made like Travis, we have a Travis Pro. So, I think it's the same thing, right? I just have a Travis file that builds the image and pushes it to ECR. And then then we have a script to basically uh, deploy the image onto the ECS. Yes. Similar, you have a script? Similar, similar, yes. It's just like an ECS CLI, basically. Yeah. Update the task definition with, with this, this image version and image name. That's it's a, it's a bit, it's a bit manual. I mean, there's only like three steps, but it's manual, um, which isn't great. But you, ideally, once ECR has been pushed to, there's a hook to push it onto a staging server or something. Have you done that? Uh, well, I had to stop at that point because uh, there was some manual test which needs to be done before deploying. So there had to be a manual, uh, you know, button press before going uh, to live until staging is completely automated. Like as soon as you merge the code or commit the code, it goes into staging so with it all testing. So image, deploys it to ECR, and then how do you, how do you, how do you oh, so once the push is done to ECR, then it does the uh, Docker compose up or something? Uh, yes, it's in the it's auth all in that point, yes. Uh, service, up. service up or service restart. Yeah, but <laughs> ECS CLI, uh. <laughs> But, did, but you have to change the co you have to change the compose file, otherwise it doesn't do anything. Uh, yes, yes. So I'm the problem which I mentioned before. So I had to convert all my compose file to AWS task definition, the whole big JSON file. So I had to convert to that just because of the memory reservation parameter. So you're not using the compose. No, I was using it before, but I had to move because I had to. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Jason bar is really the Jason bar is very, is very like it took me at least a day to come up with an equivalent JSON file for a Docker for a five line Docker Compose file. I had to create a 130 line JSON uh, doc, uh, task definition file. Well, man, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> you had patience of a saint. I would have given up at that point. Maybe. Uh, I was really looking for this uh, kind of scheduling system to work, so that's why maybe I stick to it, make it work. Um, I was going to say that. I don't think this is this is confidential, but uh, I, uh, my, the company I work for has set up a meeting with ECS product owners. Um, I'm not sure what day, Wednesday or Thursday, not like not today or tomorrow. Have you done that, or have you been able to get a meeting with them, or uh, any support? No, no, I haven't. I haven't done any support. You, or you want a support contract with them? no, we are on a very minimum support contract. Like a, I will raise a request and they will answer in 48 hours. But that's that's no that's is that that's the normal one, right? No, I think we're on the basic one. Yeah, but you, I mean, you sound like you're using large and the rest of it. You must be spending a lot of money with Amazon. They don't they don't give you like you come here to Amazon reinvent. I mean, are you not gonna haven't you arranged any meetings or are you just here to chat to chat to people like me? I guess. <laughs> no, I have got a couple of meetings. I have got a couple of meetings with the uh, with the billing department, with the billing team, and you know the EC2 team. How we can optimize based on the resources we are using. But uh, I didn't receive any. You know, I I didn't really find out about how can I get a meeting with ECS guys. I didn't really get a chance. Like I, I don't even know if it was possible. Well, I'm without sounding too pessimistic here but I think the product owners are probably not going to be technical I think so I think I mean I, I think Amazon is an amazing company but it it is a bit weird how you can sometimes have a you know what they call them partner managers or basically you can interface with someone who's non-technical uh, on this level, I mean, when you're in a support context, it's obviously different. But so yeah, it, it might be a total waste of time. Uh, this meeting, um, I, I don't have high hopes, in all honesty, because uh, as I mentioned, I, I do monitor the, all the GitHub repositories. I watch them, and I'm, you know, I, I'm, I, I think I, I mean, I have to look it up, but I know who the developers are. Ideally, I'd get them on this table and say, "What the f are you guys doing?" Like the the major irritating th irritation for me is the ECS C CLI, the 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 images, the AMIs are not up to date. That that causes and hence the agents are not up to date. You can it's. I have figured out that it's it's easy to update the agents, I and mean, you can do it in the console. Just click update agent. But come on, give me a break, guys. Do your job, uh, sort of thing. Um, uh, and. The main challenge is you cannot automate the whole thing. You cannot automate the whole thing from. I wanted to do it from cloud formation, so set up the whole cluster. I can set up the whole cluster. I can set up the uh, auto scaling groups. I can set up the uh, cluster definition. But after this part, I cannot do anything else. There's a, like, like auto scaling group. You cannot set up a service auto scaling group from our cloud formation. You have to do it via CLI and with CLI it's so it's, it's a, such a big pain like I would just go in and just click things just because it's a setup so it's a one time setup anyway but I will do it with CLI uh, if I will if I, I will have more time uh, the thing is I was really yeah. disappointed with the aided cloud formation part I mean, I mean yeah ECS CLI, CLI is one of the best I, I can write Go. I know what the problem is. You probably know what the problems are. But I'm not motivated to write. Co I'm not writing, motivated to to write code for those guys. Um, not without getting paid or something like that. You know, I got to. I get paid for other stuff. I don't want to. But um, yeah, I've seen forks of ECSLI where where other companies are basically patch ECSLI to do some things like set, like setting up the load balancer. You have to do that manually. That's a huge exactly. pain in the butt. Yes. 
Um, I have scripts actually. I could share them with you. I mean, I think I shared that in the video actually, uh, where I, I I basically have all these AWS CLI commands where I have like four steps to set up a, a cluster or something like that. Oh, here's here's a, another stupid story I just remembered. <laughs> so, uh, like on Sunday, like I get paid, like the the um, the service is down. <laughs> I, lo I log in and the, the service is just missing. It's just gone. Um, and I look in the logs and um, and the agent logs were saying things like the image was deleted. So I'm thinking, what? You know, there was like cleanup operations. I'm thinking, I don't believe this. The agent has cleaned up and killed everything. This cannot be true. But the funny thing was that I, I raised the issue with Amazon. And it turns out that the, the developer, you see, this, this is another problem I think with ECS, is that like we're DevOps people, I guess, but the developer needs to have the power to deploy things. And the developer logged into the console and somehow deleted the service. I said to the developer, like, uh, how did you do that? And he said, oh, I don't know. But that's the kind of stuff I have to deal with. Um, <laughs> So basically, after that instance, um, Amazon said, like, oh, you should carefully set your policy for your developers so that they can't delete things. I mean, come on. They need to be able to update services and all this stuff. Um, but uh, I guess there must be a policy for that. But I, I, anyway, I just thought I should relate that story because, like, other Amazon products, like, um, this was set up before I joined the company, like, uh, what's it called, Elastic Beanstalk? They they proper they manage that sort of developer story a lot better, so that the developer can literally cannot f it up. But yeah, that's another avenue with ECS I don't like, is that um, there doesn't seem to be a very there's no like yeah there's no setup with the load balancer. There's no like clear line between developer and uh, uh, and and dev and administrator. So there's so many pitfalls. It's ridiculous. We could have we could have made a list uh, arms length here, I guess. Yes, well, I can go on and on. Uh, the other big problem was, the other big, big problem I'm facing right now <coughs> is AWS only provides, like it claims to be a scheduling, Docker, Docker scheduling service. The agent. Their ECS agent. But it only provides like four metrics for monitoring. So, Memory utilization and CPU utilization. Per service. Network? Network, no. No networks, nothing. No I.O. Oh, we, we use Datadog, and I got the Datadog image running with our other image. So Datadog sends us quite a lot of stuff. Um, I couldn't tell you what all the metrics are offhand, but it tells, tell, tells me stuff I, I, that... Um, actually, there's a complaint. Uh, that's just generally with this industry. It's like, like Datadog, they give you like all these metrics and things like that. But like, you know, I maybe I'm being lazy here, but I do want them to come up with like a story. Like, like what should I use? Can you tell me what I should use, please? Because there's like fifty thousand metrics here. What should I be using? <laughs> and like, the simplest thing actually is like, like a health. A health check, I guess. Like a, le I guess you can get that from the load balancer. But, yeah, but like, uh, what would you do from those metrics? Like, what kind of actions would you set up? How would you set it up? You have to send it to CloudWatch to actually set up an automated uh, action. Yeah, the, I, th I think you're saying what I think you're saying. You, there's, you have to do all this work to to do the job and. I mean, Amazon, I think, is in the service, service um, managed service game, I think. They should, provide, they should provide what Datadog is providing to you right now. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the it really all just comes down to if the, if the developers in the, the ECS team in Amazon are actually, like, are, are they, like, important and are they getting the resources to do their work? Because uh, that's what I'm looking for in that meeting. 
I want to get like a taste. Is it? Is if this? Are these guys serious about ECS? Because it's it's looking quite bad from the outside. But but to be honest, I've had experiences with Amazon where they um, they launched a product and it's been well, it's crap. You know, it's laughable. But they got better. Yes, that's why that's why I stick to it ECS for like six months, waiting for the auto scaling group to be to reach that level, and waiting for the whole pipeline to reach that level. That's why I was waiting. They will get better. But I think I th uh, because I search on Google a lot about ECS war stories. I don't see many people sharing yeah. about ECS at all. Like I, that's that's, a, that's, a, that's a thing. Like. Uh, I don't know. Are you? Do you read Hacker News? Yes. I think that's our, that's our problem right there, because Hacker News is like maybe in reality a year ahead of what people actually do. Like, you know, there's the, like for example in Hacker News, like serverless. I think is about is is like you know there's a story about serverless things every now and then. But when I got down to writing the software and 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 doing the trust thing with uh, Google and uh, and um, STS. I was like, no one has done this. I was like GitHub searching. Like someone must have written some code to do some of the the, the token manipulations. Someone must have done this. I seriously, I was writing code, and it was like, I hate doing this. I am the first one to do this. <laughs> By the sound of some things, and and similarly with ECS, it's like you're right. There's so many problems. There should be like um, a YouTube channel devoted to it. Um, to containerization on, on the Amazon platform because the, the information on the ground is pretty weak. This is why I started the blog actually at work. Um, but no one reads it, I guess. Uh, but uh, you didn't find it on a Google search. I didn't find it on Google. I didn't find it. You have to like make it more indexed. <laughs> so what about, what about you? I mean, have you, have you blogged or... Oh, whoa. Come on. That's a bit... You no, I have. I'm, lit I'm literally here head hunting for yeah. DevOps for my team. I literally have no time for this. <clears throat> you have no time for moaning publicly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, okay. Would you work for us? <laughs> uh, oh. well, I'm, 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 <laughs> depends how many million of dinars <laughs> per second I get. No, well, well, um. All right, it's interesting stuff. We need to um, find other ECS people. There's got to be some people here. And then um, you probably... I signed up for the ECS session. I signed up for the ECS session and reinvent. It's, oh. it's already full. Oh, so God. I just turned up at the gate. The thing that scares me about those sessions is that, um, not to sound too... Um, what's that term? Like too... Uh, confident here or something but like they looked a bit simple you know what I mean it's like like how ECS was used to transform our business process or something or whatever dude I need to get into the fucking nitty-gritty details because <laughs> um, that's the problem right here yeah oh how are we doing for time I think can I just say I hate American currency it is so crazy it's too much they're all, and they're too similar it's like the hundreds look like ones <laughs> one it's too many, it's too much. I think that's enough. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, I agree, I agree. And also, it's a whole Vegas. It's very rich too. It's like, yeah, I don't, I don't, what is food like? In, food in Dubai is good. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing, like, from all over the world, every best uh, franchise is there from all over the world. Like, you can taste Brazil, Mexico, all the countries in one city. Damn, that sounds good. Well, I like Singapore, actually. I, I do poo-poo Singapore a bit, but, like, you can eat for, like, $5 in Singapore easily. And, yeah. it's, and it's good. And it's, like, clean, yes. clean healthy-ish. You know, nothing like... Yeah. The stuff is heavy. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think the breakfasts are going to be in the Venetian from tomorrow. Yes. yes. So this is like the last, hopefully, one I will, will pay for. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, great to meet you, Jamal. Same here. Uh,